Welcome back, everybody. This week, we're working on our professional artist resumes. Now, just like the portfolios, you'll find that some of us are going to have more items that we can list than others based on our current level of experience. You will have fewer exhibitions, for example, if you're just starting out. But this is the resume checklist that I drew up for you, and I'd like everybody to kind of take a look at that and think about what items you might include. You definitely want to include education. Obviously, even if you have not received the degree yet, you need to list the program that you're in, which for most of us is the Associate of Fine Arts Visual Art Program uh, at Cape Fear Community College. That'll be the first thing that you list. You want to make sure and list everything in reverse chronological order so that the first thing in each category is the most current thing. So your education should go first. I would go back through high school. Make sure that you're listing both the name of the school and the specific degree program um, or the degree that was received. Your next category for most of us will probably be work experience, and you may not have a relevant art job to list, so you don't necessarily have to list every job that you've ever had. What most people will be looking at um, at this point would be just to make sure that you have uh, a fairly consistent work history, that you've had a job with some form of responsibility. Um, but of course, if there are uh, relevant things that you've done in your jobs that relate to art in any way, it's best to list those there as well. So one tip to think about is to go ahead and list absolutely everything and then pick and choose through it the things that you think apply the most directly to uh, transfer into an art program or into an art-related field. Um, just like my portfolio, I have one version that is virtually everything I've ever made that I would not show to everyone. That's the one that I use to curate which items I want to showcase. I do the same thing with my resume. I have a version that is absolutely every art-related thing all the way back to undergrad. And then I have a current one, which is the most important uh, or most impressive, arguably, things that are also the most recent. So it's not a bad idea to go ahead and list everything and then to from that list to curate what you want for the purposes of one page worth of information about your most current accomplishments. That brings us to point three, awards. You might not have one yet, and that's okay, but think about things that you have received any kind of recognition for, whether it was an honorable mention, a scholarship, something that indicates that you received some form of recognition. Special interests and in projects might be an area where you could list things that don't quite fit into other areas, things that are not exactly job related or education related. Maybe you were in a club, maybe you designed a logo for a youth group, that type of thing could go into point four. Your exhibition record, again, is going to vary based on how, how many shows you've been in. Exhibitions on campus absolutely count. So if you were in uh, the end of the year student art exhibition, obviously that's something to include. Often uh, professors at Cape Fear will hold exhibitions off campus. You may have been part of an on-campus show. That's something to think about as well. Clients, of course, will vary person to person, but this would be a place where you could start keeping a list of people who've paid you for commissions or who have purchased work from. So that's the checklist just to kind of get some ideas going. Once you have that information, I would suggest taking a look at this website, which is the uh, College Art Association 2021 Standards for artist resumes. So there's a lot of information here, and that may apply more directly to people who are uh, further along in the process than we are at a two-year school thinking about transferring to a four-year school. You notice that they have included important uh, information here, your contact information, keeping that as to date as possible. Your education, again, is a major category, and you notice that they are in reverse chronological order, and the degree and school are listed as well as the location there. You'll also notice that within this section you have awards or grants, exhibitions. If you have multiples, you may find them divided into different categories. Uh, most professional art resumes will separate out your solo exhibitions from group exhibitions, but in either case, you know they are in 
reverse chronological order, the title of the exhibition as well as the gallery or location and the city are included as well. No need to go into specifics about which dates, like what month or specific days, just the year is enough. If you have more than one in a given year, of course, you would simply list the year and then the uh, exhibitions beyond that. Um, you might be in commissions, collections, that would be museums or galleries that have permanently purchased your work. Unlikely that most of us would have collections at this point, um, but commissions, clients, that type of thing might work. Bibliography would be if you have been published, if your work has been published, or if there have been publications about you, that would also be something to consider. Uh, if you can find links to those items online, that's definitely useful to include. L. The other thing to be thinking about is what yours might look like format-wise, and most likely your formatting is going to look something like this. Very simple contact information, education, any particular uh, exhibitions, publications, etc., in a one-page format like this would work really quite well. So I've provided multiple guidelines for you. We want to keep this fairly simple. One to two pages is best. Um, and of course, you don't want to pad it with tons of excess information. I personally tend to think that those um, templates that ask you to include things like a statement of purpose or goal statement is sort of beside the point. We know what the goal is if you're looking as, as a resume and you're submitting work to our four-year school to receive a BFA. We know what your goal is if you're approaching us as a gallery. So I don't really think you need to worry about those things here. Keep it simple, keep it honest, and keep it in reverse chronological order with your best and most important information at the top of each of your categories.